Hello friends! It is such an exciting time for me. <laughs> Hopefully it's an exciting time for you guys because I am going to do a flip through of all the projects that I made for 2019. The first half of the year I was very very productive and expanded the things that I worked on a lot. That was due to a couple things. One, I had two ongoing YouTube series with a couple of YouTube friends. So I'll mention them when I get to the layouts done with them. And um, two, I feel like I explored mixed media more and different sizes. If you're new to my channel, this flip through will give you an idea of my style and the types of things that I am into. And, um, you know, hopefully it'll get you excited for the upcoming year. I've put paper clips on all the projects that have a process video. I'll probably pick my top, um, I think YouTube lets you attach five cards or maybe it's 10 cards on the video. So I'll pick my top few to link up and I will mention, obviously, if there's a paper clip, that there's a process video. I have the raw footage for almost every project I've ever made. Um, I don't think I filmed some of the Project Life stuff, but most of the other ones, when I sit down to scrap at my desk, I just go ahead and film. So I have the raw footage. If I get some requests for some of the layouts, particularly from the end half of the year, that don't have process videos, if I get requests for them, I'm gonna definitely put them on a list. I can't make promises when they'll be done, but I just have this urge to share a few more. There's some layouts that were my favorites and, and I sadly couldn't do the YouTube videos at the time. So, you know, I might get to them. Let me give you the numbers. I counted a total of 64 projects that I worked on, individual projects. Of those, 41, were the pages 12 by 12 traditional scrapbooking and then five are double page spreads tn size which is in a couple different formats are 14 spreads which i i don't know if you count those i i count those as like a a, a page because some of my tn size spreads really are like a mini 12 by 12 they're just shrunk a little you know and um, I do have two pages I specifically did at 9 by 12. I did one spread that was 6 by 12. Um, Project Life, I didn't keep up with, but I have a few spreads here, and there are a total of six of them, I believe. And yeah, so those were by the number, and, oops, sorry, one stitchery. And the reason why this is included is because the sweater weather was a digital scrapbooking um what do you call it a stamp digital stamp from ashley horton of the the cut shop so that's why this is here now i'm going to clear out the smaller things i think most people really are into my 12 by 12 so i'm going to start with those first here is the lovely 12 by 12 traditional stack i love having a stack of layouts to put away. I know that a lot of people don't, <laughs> but I like to see it get bigger and bigger. And then I like to have a big session to put everything away. In fact, I had said last year I was going to do a reorganization of my albums. I posted a partial of that for when I did my class uh, contribution to um, Larkin Designs in my Pocket Kids class, um, there's a video where I showed just my girls' albums, but I did do a complete reorganization. And it's, uh, you know, like 80% ready. I have to find the time to finish editing. And then I'll probably have to do an updated one where I put these guys away in the albums. <laughs> But anyways, I do really love just seeing the stack build up. So it's really fun to see this at the end of the year. And that's why I'm so excited today to show it to you. 
let's start. At the beginning of 2019, I was still on the Simple Stories team. I don't remember the names of the collection, sorry, but um, there's a process video for this one, and it was fun. I did some cut file stitching. You'll see quite a bit of that <laughs> as we keep going, and um, I just had fun with this one, the colors. I also joined the color cast design team at the beginning of 2019. I was so honored to be chosen. Look at the other creatives on this team, We're amazing. And um, you know, to celebrate that, I made a layout uh, with the team photo, a lot of fun combining, you know, old product from my stash with a bunch of the acrylics and, and a couple of the wood veneer from that particular um, release and stitching. I am thinking of making some sort of stitch file like this. So I'm probably getting ahead of myself, but I did start an Etsy shop. I mean, I did the announcement to that for that uh, in December, I have a little video. But uh, I, one of the things I make are cut files and I like to include stitching holes for you. So like when I made this, I did the stitching. Uh, uh, as I went along and this is chain stitching but uh, yeah I'm thinking maybe I'll incorporate that into one of my releases you can see the back fun 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 <laughs> um, anyways this was for color cast designs this was another layout for oh there was a process video for that one this one is for simple stories and I'm not a big pink girl I mean I'm warming up to it somewhat but I do love when it's a blush type color and combining it with the wood grain just made this for me. Plus all the stitching, right? So there is a process video for this fun times. I had two different series on the my channel last year. And the first one is make it a double with my friend crafty Maggie we took one page inspiration from things we had pinned on Pinterest and made them into nice fresh tw uh, two pagers you know double page layouts because uh, got a lot of feedback that there isn't a lot of double page inspiration out there so this was the first one I made I'm absolutely still in love with this so fun and um, I'll be showing you some more double pagers I it was sad we both had to um, put that series on pause but I would love to take that up again with her at some point so this was for make it a double and and what was great is we each interpreted that each differently which is um it's a lot of fun to see when you have two different interpretations so process video for that is it's a whole playlist for that series and this was for simple stories now i think this one was called simple vintage farmhouse it was a lot of fun making this strip like a shelf <laughs> and then there's a pull tab with the before of my makeover, my coffee bar, which I use every day and absolutely love. There is not a process video for this one, I'm sorry. But, you know, if you really wanna see it, put the request down below. Okay, and, and I've got everything roughly in order. Obviously, the traveler's notebook size, I pushed off to the side. But this I made for Colorcast Designs. I do have a process video. Now, this is 2 6 by 12 So this was really an insert, a layout insert. So they, they do go in my project life back to back like this. And it's about my daughter's birthday. I had her do the journaling. And I... Uh, you know, a lot of my favorites from this year involve white cardstock, mixed media of some sort. And so I did, um, well, there's a process video for this one. I don't want to take up too much time on this flip through. Although I have to say, I need to do this more. Full, pay, full photo, I did some splatters and I really love the results on the photo. This was for Crafty Maggie's five-year YouTube anniversary. We did a hop. I did this for her. Um, I used old Jelly Bean Soup kit 
and um, I think there's even some basic gray in here. The, the sequins are Spiegelmann's wraps because I was a guest designer for her a couple months before that and that was leftover that I had. It was really fun because it had, you know, the hexagons, which I thought went well with the gears. This was another lamp for the Make It A Double and I used a Coco Daisy kit, which was, I think it was called Fresh Cut and so, so beautiful. And um, mixed media, I did some rub-ons. I've done quite a bit of those recently, I love it. Um, splatters, you name it, I love it. So Make It A Double, there's a process video part of the, the whole series. Then the next one is um, my last layout for Simple Stories and another mixed media background. This one was the Tim Holtz. So this one over here, I used some Heidi Shine, <laughs> Heidi, Swap color sh Heidi Swap Color Shines and the packaging technique where you take the, the plastic put a little bit of the ink or whatever, spritz it and then smoosh. This was using Tim Holtz signature style, the, the blending tool. I believe it was distress inks, not distress oxides, because I don't think I had distress oxides at the time. And then once I did that, I spritzed it, got those little blooms. That's how I made that. No process video for this one. I just sort of told you half of it. <laughs> Um, this one was for my other YouTube series. I did a series called Sketch It Up, Sketch It Down with my friend Susanna Lee. Each month we took turns and each month we designed a sketch ourselves. And then we each interpreted it in different size. So for instance, for this first one, I did do a 12 by 12. And I'm not sure what she did, but there's a series, process videos for the whole series. And... I wanted to show you, I didn't show this in the process video. This is how these lay in my travel album. I do have a, an oversized printer where I can do, you know, I can do bigger than this, but do 12 by 12 full page photos, which I absolutely adore doing. And in this case, all I did was typed up this before I printed it. So this is, um, I count this as a double pager and I think it's a really fun way to do this where you have a 12 by 12 traditional layout um, with a whole lot of details and then you just have a big photo of something really important and um, I'm hoping to do more like that. I really love that. So the process video for the this side is up in that playlist. Um, I put these here. They're basically very few Project Life pages I made last year, um, and both were from early in the year. So this is February, and I'm not even sure if I ever shared these on anywhere. But there's a spread from February last year. And then, um, you know, I used Colorcast Designs, uh, Ali Edwards stuff. I think that's mainly what I did. And then... This is another spread, and I know I did share this because I did it as an assignment for Colorcast Designs using some of the acrylics. Um, and this is a March spread, which I believe goes this way. So um, I did a lot of chunky work last year, I primarily because of all my assignments for Colorcast Designs. You know, Project Life. I'll I'll be I'll get back to you. In fact, this year I've I've been eyeing everyone doing memory planners, and I wanted to do sort of a memory planner style, but this size, we'll see. It just hasn't gotten slotted in my schedule. <laughs> okay, this was done for another hop. This was Virginia from Confessions of a Paper Attic Copa Cut Files. She opened up a shop last year and had a big hop to celebrate, and I made this for her. And um, I wanted to point out that one of the things I like to do, which I haven't been able to do recently too much because a lot of the work I've been doing is design teamwork, 
and I'm given the product, but I like putting old stuff with new. So these were like from 2007 and there's so many times I thought about throwing them away and I'm so glad I didn't because they were perfect on this cut file. I just love the results. This is all Felicity Jane product and then her the Copa cut file and, and these are really old. I love it, it's fun. There's a process feeder because that was a YouTube haul. I made this for color cast designs. This was the set that came out, but I also used some, um, this is Coco Daisy products and some, I think this is Simple Stories, Allie Edwards, love mixing it up. Some old buttons that might be Simple Stories or might be Chamel. <laughs> um, I think this is Freckle Fawn, lots of, lots of different goodies. Now, so I mentioned I opened up an Etsy shop. You know, there's a video I'll link that up, the video of the announcement. So this is one of the cut files I made. Well, I didn't use a cut file for this because I, I machine stitched, but it, taking this as inspiration, I made a cut file that simulates this look. I was honored to be asked to join the cut shop design team by Ashley Horton. And this is the first layout I made. I was a little nervous making it, and I was also a little nervous posting it because I wasn't sure how people would like it. but. Actually, people really liked this. I took the cut file and I, first of all, used half, I masked off half, there's a, there's a process video, so that I could spritz and use it as a stencil and I tore it off and back to the other side. I think this is a lot of fun, so it's different. This is also for the cut shop. It was um, Easter layout. I used Felicity Jane products Actually, I think these, a lot of these are Felicity Jane too. Um, and this one, I wish I had a process video because I had so much fun making this. Um, I wanna point out here that, you know, I added the little pom-poms, which is something that I, I've added more and more throughout time as well. Um, loved being able to tuck in a few little you know, pieces, little nests <laughs> of uh, thread. And then I added these really old, old brads, just three of them. They're just tucked here and there. And I just, this is what it delights me is being able to mix some stuff in old products, new products, just, I don't know, making it my own. <laughs> um, and also I, I shrink down cut files quite a bit, I've noticed. So that was the, the cut shop cut file. Uh, this does not have a process video either, and this is also for the cut shop. I believe this was for International Scrapbooking Day. Oh, I still love this one so much. This was for the Make It A Double, and our inspiration piece was similar to this in that it had strips of papers and photos and, and some mixed media and all this stitching, whatever. But I made it a double by using a big oversized photo like I said I really love that look but I tied them together by doing this is whip spackle now I'll put some links down below to some of my favorite tools and um, products now I can't do everything for instance like every single collection or anything but but things like the spackle with spackle really awesome it doesn't flake off it gives a really nice texture um, I think this came out really awesome. Just tying it in together with that and the stitching and bringing in decorations in the white space. So this is, this has, I love this layout. <laughs> and you can see the process video. So it makes me happy that I do have a process video for this one. I don't wanna mess up that mixed media there. Ah, oh, another mixed media beauty. Um, I tried out some 9x12s this year. I, I like the look, but honestly, I don't know if I like a rectangle in general. So I only did a couple. There's a process video. This was for color cast designs. And um, I just love the colors. It was great, great release. Oh, here's the other 9x12. Um, this was a little fun one. I'm gonna actually include this in the Project Life for this year, the 2019. Um, this is the cut file I shrunk down again and I did a little mixed media around water liquid watercolor and then stamped on in the circles and a lot of this is 
um, Ellie's studio. There is a process video for this. Color cast designs using, well, her release, a lot of great acrylics, and then uh, Pink Fresh Studio, their travel collection. Um, I made the previous year another layout that had like wedges and then it had one photo. I thought it'd be fun to do multiple photos. So I really like how it came out. These are all three by eights that I printed out. So this is a little different. I love it. Process video. Oop. I put two of these in there and two on here as well. Huh? I wonder where I got these from that I'm missing from somewhere else. Um, delightful. This is about my mommy and I used for, it's for the cut shop. I used the delightful cut file and Felicity Jane products. And there is a process video. This is the one I don't have a process video for it, which makes me kind of sad. And it's like one that's on my list if I can find the time. Um, I used some Felicity Jane products like these. And then just, I liked putting in a few, what do they call these, fibers? <laughs> Um, on it, an old button. I even used a skewer from the kitchen that I painted. Just, I was inspired by some wall hangings that I saw at Ikea. And really love how this came out. This is probably the only one I ever gessoed in the background. And I found it really hard to control this, the mixed media. It was kind of a mess, but um, finally got it to a point where I liked it, let it dry, and then I stamped in the same color colorway so that it sort of blends in the background. Really love how this turned out. And um, like I said, it's on my list of like, if I have the time, I will make this process video because I, I really want to share this. And rub-ons, I did a lot of rub-ons the past year and continuing to this year, so fun. This does have a process video. This was for the Sketch It Up, Sketch It Down series. And um, some, oh gosh, I think this is Chamel stuff. And some Allie Edwards, some enamel dots that are probably my mind's eye. But I did this for the um, color cast designs. I used this acrylic. This was a lot of fun. And there's a process video. Ah, this one I made for color cast designs. This is another one that, well, actually, I don't know about process video because a lot of this is just stitching, so you're just sitting at the machine. But this is a lot of fun. I say that a lot, don't I? <laughs> um, I? I really wanted to concentrate on those acrylics, so I really bunched them together into areas and, and a lot of stitching. Sorry, no process video. Made this one for the cut shop. This was the cut file here, and I kind of have a hard time with themed cut files. I don't know, but I really liked this, how this came out. I just went and oversized it, so it's fun. And Jelly Bean Soup Collection is what I used. This was for the Make It A Double. Again, we took a, a single page layout that we found on Pinterest that we liked, which had an oversized cup file like this, and I made it double-sized. So what makes it, well, there's a process video, but I think it's always important to tie something across, so I did it with the bottom here. This is a cup file I sell in my shop, hint, hint. Um, I don't have it where you stitch on here, because I had a hard time stitching it myself. I actually used thinner paper than I normally cut my cut files on. But um, but this cut file is in the shop. And there's a process video. Got the backyard camping. This was done for color cast designs. And this is also a cut file in the shop. So I think this one's called my ABCs and this one's called Geodomes. Yeah, lots of fun. Lots of mix of products here too. Um, Coco Vanilla Studio line. And so these are from the cut shop and then a few other extras. 
I guess designed for the Wild Hair Kids. So if you didn't weren't around for 2018, wait, 2017, 2017 to 2018, halfway, halfway, I was on the Wild Hair Kids for a whole year. And um, then I came back as a guest designer this past summer. And this is one of the layouts I made with my kit. Hand cut the fl fabulous flying foxes. Um, and I can't remember. I think these are from an Amy Tan. Amy Tangerine line. Um, the little puffies. But it was a mix of stuff. This is like the only mixed media background I felt like was too much, but it's okay. Uh, I made this for the cut shop. This was uh, the cut file here, which I love this style, and I want to bring that into more cut files where you you flip it up. Um, there was a lot of adhesive going on on this one. I do not have a process video for this, but if you want to see it, <laughs> um, I also... And I believe I filmed that and still have the footage. I actually typed my journaling in a circle and I cut and I printed on vellum and cut it out and put it in the between there. And I actually color cast design stuff in here too from an older thing. But this was um, made for the cut shop during Scrappy Christmas in July. And some old little felt balls. Uh, one of the other Project Life oops things I did was this so it is about a uh, front and back and the interesting thing is that two of these this and this I printed with my life print printer and you can see on my Instagram I don't know if it'll let me link up to that but I'll put it in the description um, you can see these actually play uh, I videoed my screen as I went over it with the Life Print app, so you can see these come to life. Though so that's really fun, and I did make this for the color cast designs. This is one of the other layouts for the Wild Hair Kits, and it's I hadn't documented making the team when I was on the team. <laughs> so I took advantage and documented it this summer. It was my first design team, 2017. And yeah, the rest is history. So we got to a point where I wasn't doing any videos, YouTube videos. Yeah, so if you see anything you like, just pop down on the comments below. This was made for the cut shop, and I used two cut files, this one and this one, and I shrunk this basically to as small as you can get without it tearing up. Um, I do like to use a really thick cardstock. It's a hundred weight, which allows me to cut so thin, and um, so it's the same one here. And I same with the white that I use for my shop. If if you, I I cut the cut files and physically mail them to you if that's what you want. I also do digital downloads. But anyways, back to this one. These are not my cut files. These are from the cut shop. So I know I say a lot of fun all the time. This is another one of my absolute favorites from the year. And I've already had, I had a couple people ask me to do the process video for this. I just, it's on my list. Um, so much details in this. I had done another layout that had that cascade effect of papers this is a slightly different version and i don't know I, it's like something i could do all over and over again i liked bringing in a lot of old stuff so this was for color cast design so i used her acrylics and and there's just tons of different oh also from her these which i think she has still in shop some of the grade wood veneer and, and lots of other little bits even in the stitching so I mean, I don't know what else to say, except this is what I want to make a process video for. I got to find the raw footage. And another favorite. This is for the cut shop. This cut file is just when I saw it, I fell in love. And she came out with digital stamps. I printed some of them on vellum to put in here. This was for Colorcast Designs. More acrylics. 
but we had a collaboration with Carrie Bradford Studios and that's where you see this stamp in the background. You know what I forgot to mention? This was also a collaboration with Carrie Bradford Studios and I used this stamp to make a paper and um, these are also stamps from one of her sets. So I'll have a link to her shop down below. So and this is the stamp from Carrie Bradford Studio and then acrylics from Colorcast Designs and lots of other bits and bobs. I did this with the um, Tim Holtz Distress Oxides. So it's, it's quite a different look and I really love how that comes out. And then I used the same Distress Oxides because they were the, the pads and stamped. So that was a lot of fun. Colorcast Designs Acrylics and Coco Vanilla Studio, one of their collections. Another one made for Colorcast Designs. You see a pattern here? <laughs> I tend to do most things on assignment. That's why it worked out really well to have a couple of series where I used any products. Um, it's just that it got a little bit overwhelming for everyone over, all around. We had to we had to stop on that, but I would love to do that again. Um, this is a cut file from my Etsy shop, and it is one that you stitch by hand like this. I think it, when I I um, altered it to for sale, I made this a little skinny here because I didn't like how thick that was. And I used Coco Daisy products from their autumn set. It was really really pretty. This was for Colorcast Designs, and I didn't show this. Well, actually, this is, doesn't have a doesn't have a process video, right? Um, this is a cut file I made, but I haven't put it in the shop because I didn't know if it would go over well. Um, it was a lot of fun to just play with it, like a really unusual layout for me, having the photos, you know, separated and things in the middle. I like how it turned out, and I used the latest line from Crate Paper for Halloween. And I think it went really well with the Wicked Awesome and these from Colorcast Designs. And then my idea was to make it a double look. I've got another oversized picture, a double page spread like this. But I did start decorating here and I didn't like how it was coming out. So I might reprint this because it's got some adhesive on it. But I might just leave it like this and then just add a little journaling because I was putting, it was put, getting to be too much. So I think what I would do is add a little journaling. I don't wanna see the whole point with these is that we, he, my husband was playing with the um, settings on the, on the camera and got these awesome photos of them semi-transparent. So like ghosties. So I don't wanna like cover that up so you, it's not obvious, but somewhere on here I, I might do a little journaling and maybe one embellishment. This will be a double pager. I made this for Retro Hip Magazine and I think this is actually the first time I show the whole thing. It was for issue nine. Um, this is a cut file in my shop, this one, and it, it is cut smaller so you have an overhang of these leaves that pop up there's stitch lines and uh, i will be making i printed this vellum leaves and cut them out to match but it was from the issue nine retro hit magazine printables i will have a version of this probably back in the fall when fall comes back around um be working on that again but the cut file is available in my shop and more mixed media. This is another one that I'm totally smitten with. Almost to the end. All right. I just joined the Coco Daisy team in December, and this is my first layout for them. I used the December Nordic Wood kits. I think there are a few pieces left. You could check in the shop and, um, like full kits aren't there, but there's there are a few odds and ends. And then I used a cut file from my own Etsy shop. This is the Messy Circles. 
I um, they do not have stitch lines so I did some messy stitching around I was trying to design ones that had stitch lines but they were also like this and it's not gonna work with this thinness so I have to redesign that but anyways this was made for Coco Daisy and last but not least on the 12 by 12s and 12 by 24s made this for color cast designs January release but it was um, posted the the releases are always on the 25th the, the previous month and this is a cup file in my shop called uh, Snowdrifts. Has these stitch, well, it's got holes along here, and I happen to do a chain stitch for mine. And paired it with the Color Cast Designs acrylics. And I seem to like to do my journaling along lines, don't I? <laughs> okay, ah, I am getting kind of tired of talking. I hope you guys aren't getting tired of hearing me though because I still have the other stuff to show you, but they'll go quicker. These are all smaller size. There's not much in them, don't worry. <laughs> um, like I mentioned before, this is from, well, this is Stitchery. This is from Jelly Bean Soup. They're make the media sets of stuff, you know, for home decor. Um, I just traced photo, um, little icons of sweaters and made this up but this is the important part um ashley from the cut shop <laughs> sorry it's just that most of my team start with a c and i get tongue-tied the cut shop has um the digital st uh, stamps that she made and this is one of them for an autumn kit and what i did is i I actually printed it on a paper. It's like a wash away stabilizer that's printer sheets you can put through. I'll put a link to that in case you're ever interested in that. Um, it's really fabulous stuff because you can print anything, you stick it on fabric, and then you've got your design and you stitch it and then you just put it in water and dissolve. The, the, the stuff you print it on dissolves, it's great. So that's that made for the cut shop. This has three different layouts that I made, I believe, for Sketch It Up, Sketch It Down series. In those months, I chose to do Traveler's Notebook size. They, they're not in order, but I'll be linking up the, the playlist. Um, so there's this one. This is a TN, which I'm hoping to have a series of by the end of next year when my daughter graduates college so that she has something to take with her that's not the big 12 by 12s. And I'm putting in here so these all have process videos i'm putting in here things that are a little bit more my introspection about her her character her um uh in our relationship together so i made that one and this one and they're kind of like mini 12 by 12s they're just shrunken down to eight eight and a half by eight and a half is what you really get and this one this was also for um the wild hair kits for that guest spot these were items from that kit i got something stuck there and this one was made with an ali edwards kit um and the sketch was from sketch it up sketch it down also on my blog i actually have the sketches for free so i'll put a link to that i gotta remember that and this is a freckled fawn little notebook which i've been asked about and the inserts Frickle fun. I also have these here are this is an Ali Edwards travel three by eight uh, album I made this for the cut shop and I have the cut file that I actually shrunk down backed you can't see the cut file itself because I added stitching lines um, the white you can't see it too much but I added stitching lines but this is the cut file and then I decorated with other things from the pink fresh studio line it's a process video for that. I did mention all these have process videos. And then I actually made this a little big. It's more of a TN size, so I had to cut it off a little bit. But the three by eight stuff, and these are all albums I've started, but obviously there's a lot more to go. This was also for Sketch It Up, Sketch It Down. I like this sketch. And I shrunk it down to be a three by eight insert and a more like a three by eight, you know, outside the page. So there's a process video for that as well. So I seem to do a lot of 
shrinking to this size for the Sketch It Up, Sketch It Down series. So two process videos there. Um, these, this one I made for Colorcast Design. So these also from Colorcast Designs, these wood covers, and I have several from throughout different times that she released. This one I also, I made a double page TN and this is a hybrid. There is a process video for this um, for Colorcast Designs. I also used Flare from Humble and Create. And yeah, this is hybrid. I show you the whole process of how I made this. Let's see, this one, I think this is next in line in terms of time-wise. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm losing my voice. So this is another TN I've started. This one, this is going to be things about me at different times. This one's going to be just ooh, photos I love. And I made one layout for that for Colorcast Designs. Her release had acrylics and these very awesome um, hexagons with the, the embossed flowers. So that was made for Colorcast Designs. Love big photos adding some um, mixed media droplets onto it. Just has a really cool effect. Cross this video for that. On October, I did make, okay, so this was a TN that I start. I was gonna start and I didn't get foreign, but I made one layout this year for it and I did this for the cut shop and I printed some of her, um, the digital stamps that she made onto vellum and then I used this is from uh, Colorcast Designs this is the another one of the um, the cut shop printouts and then I used a collection from Tracy Reed who has been doing lots of hybrid collection collections so you can do hybrid scrapbooking um, on her site so I'll have to remember to link her down below as well then the last last one i think i made a few things in this one and of course i don't have anything finished so this is from the previous year if you want to see this it's it's actually upside down it's from 2017 or 2018 but in this summer during scrappy christmas in july i took some of the cut shop cut files and made inserts this one, ho, ho, ho. And then I just added my stitching lines and stitched it. I made this one here and it was the Be, Be Merry, Be Bright was the cutout. I just cut it out of this paper. And then I did some playing with the um, foil quill. And this is one of the cut shop files that I, made into a sketch and sketched it with the quill the foil quill and then i just used a punch on the edge and this is another file from the cut shop that i used the quill uh foil quill so you make it into a sketch and i do have the footage for that if you are interested um that i make a process video on how to do this because you have to do some offsetting <clears throat> And I do have a couple layouts I made, color cast designs in this TN. This is supposed to be my December daily from 2018. <laughs> um, for color cast designs, I use these products and then Alley products. And I made a little cute cluster here. For the photos, often when they have some some page protectors so you put them on top and I still haven't put it back in <laughs> and then I made this other spread so at least I got a couple spreads done for my that December daily I don't have a good track record with December dailies this is also for color cast designs using this joy and the star here all right uh that is all I have to share wow I thank you from the bottom of my heart if you sat through this whole flip through, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that either you you saw something that you'd seen before and, and wanted more information about to see the process video, um, or you want the process video and let me know. Or if you're newer to my channel, 
I hope this gives you like an overview of my my style. Here, I'll bring back the 12 by 12 so we can see that stack again. As I say, pretty stack. <laughs> As I say goodbye, I can't really fan these out, can I? And um, if I have links, I will try to remember to link everything below. And yeah, moving on to 2020, I, you know, things are a little different because now I have an Etsy shop, so I will be trying to feature my cut files. <laughs> um, I am in the Colorcast Design team still, and I've joined the uh, Coco Daisy team. So a few of the process videos recently have been for that. And um, I guess I'll be doing an update for you guys sometime in the future room tour and I will be getting you some some videos on how I organized my, um, my albums because I did that last summer and putting away new stuff and I don't know we're gonna explore lots of different things um, I hope it's gonna be a fun year all right thanks for tuning in I'll see you guys next time